It's the Voice Coach Podcast with me, Nick Redman, your own personal voice geek ready to guide you through getting the most out of your speaking voice. If you use your voice for a living as an actor, podcaster, voice artist, speaker or presenter, then this is the podcast for you. Let's crack on. Hello, voice friend. How are you doing? Thanks for coming back after my um, little detour into the episode about why I think voice training is useful. I mean, if you've come back, it's because I assume that by episode 20, you kind of agree. <laughs> and if you're listening, you know how important it is. But we're back now into breath land again. And I reckon another couple of episodes on breath and I'll move on to uh, getting some vibrations going in the topic of resonance. Now, resonance, as a tiny introduction, is basically responsible for the tonal quality of the voice, really. And, you know, it's a really useful thing to understand for elements like volume projection, character voicing and loads more. But anyway, for this episode, I want us to come back to the awareness of that support low down that we explored last time and connect it to voicing, to making some actual sounds. Now, before we get started, just a reminder about why breath and support are important for the voice. Breath is the fuel for the voice, basically. It's the thing that makes the vocal folds vibrate, in essence, and it needs to be working well. What we're aiming for with all this breath and support work is a really lovely coordination of vocal fold closure and airflow so that the vocal folds and all the surrounding muscles and whatnot aren't doing more work than they need to, basically. It's all about really setting up the vocal mechanism in an efficient way to get the most out of it for as little as possible when speaking (laughs) and helping you reduce vocal fatigue. I'm just trying to make it easier. (laughs) So we're going to get straight into it. No messing. If you're in a place to make some noise, brilliant, go for it. If not, maybe listen to this now to get a feel for what's going on and come back to it later when you won't disturb the neighbours. Now, it would be obviously remiss of me not to do a teeny weeny warm up first. So let's do that. Uh, Give those limbs a shake out. This is where everything in my booth starts to wiggle and jiggle. You might get some um, (laughs) interference with the sound. Give your arms a little shake. Give your limbs a shake. You'll hear some sound coming bubbling out of me. So if you just want to go, uh, let some really gentle bubbles happen. Give those shoulders a little roll with a chewy hum. Up and down the vocal range. Oh, I was enjoying that too much. I forgot what I was doing. A few semi occluded vocal tract glides up and down. You pick your occlusion so you can go for a or a or even a fricative. That was a puffy th or a just get up and down there oh note to self pop in an episode on SOVT semi-occluded vocal tract work not sure I've actually done that yet (laughs) I'll do that next time now give your face a smush around really smush into all those nooks and crannies smushy smushy but still try and keep that feeling of ease so just make sure the muscles in the neck aren't getting a bit chaotic and a quick slug tongue. So, tongue out in the lower lip. And we're going to go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then just talk through what you're going to have for your tea. We're actually going to have uh, fish goosons, uh and chips and probably mussy peas. And then a little bit of mint sauce for my husband. And I will just have ketchup and a cup of tea. <laughs> okay, a fine little lip trail. Great. Okay, that'll do. Take a little drink because always drink of water for me. It's only uh, 10 to 10. If you feel like you need any more from the warm up, just pause this and maybe run through that five minute warm up episode again. But we should be good to go with this. We're going to keep it pretty gentle. Now, I'd advise you to be on the floor for this. So pop yourself in semi supine as usual, just so we're working with as much release in the body as possible. We're going to start with some uh, primal sounds just to connect with what goes on down there again and feel that support kicking in for us. Big up to Dan Chalfin and uh, his primal sounds. I'll pop a link in the show notes. So first they have a little giggle. (laughs) I'm not going to tell you a silly joke this time. I'm sure you can think of one yourself. (laughs) Just a little. (laughs) And really feel that muscle kicking in there. 
and how easy it is and how we don't even know we're doing it. <laughs> oh, hee hee hee. Oh, it's funny what you choose to do with your life, isn't it? Next, we're going to do a little hey. Hey, hey. And this can be as loud as you want. You could do a little gentle. You've just seen your friend. Hey, hey, how are you? Hey, hey. Or you can do a hey, someone's running in front of a bus. Hey, hey, hey. And really feel what happens there. What about a little groan or a moan? Oh, oh, oh. As if you've, um, <laughs> it's hard to keep this one from not going dirty. I'm not going to lie. But uh, let's go with an annoyed, childish groan. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what about a whoop? Whoop, 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 whoop. Woo, woo, woo. Woo! That's absolutely my favourite. I'm sorry, I could whip all day. But what you should be feeling is a little response under that hand. And remember to be releasing that lower belly any time you're letting the breath back in again. Now we're going to move on to some easy, released, voiced fricatives. We'll go with a woo, which is a puffy woo. So the lips, there's still a little bit of space between the lips. The cheeks are nice and puffy. And you're just going to let the breath wave in and let the sound wave out. So we'll start with a woo. Sigh of relief through puffy cheeks with a whir. So we get a nice, gentle breath in. Let the rest of the breath go. Breath in. Breath in. Feel it really easily. You could try a puffy TH. Breath comes in. And you could try a puffy v. So we're letting that breath wave in and the sound easily wave out. Notice the support response. If you feel like you lose that little action under the fingers when you bring in those voice sounds, then remember to use the idea that you're either turning on the response in that area and actively using it. And if you need a little extra help with that, then imagine that string behind the lower belly and someone just gently pulling that in and upwards, like a scooping motion on the sound. So you get a very gentle scoop in and up and then releasing on the in-breath again. So we can explore those three sounds, the and whilst you're doing that, just pick one, just a reminder to work with ease. Breath comes in, sound comes out. We're not pushing for volume and length here. We're not going for we're just going for a a little bubble of sound. And you're really not thinking about making the sound as a sound you recognise. You're just releasing the air through a specific obstruction at level and it happens to be a sign that we recognise. So think about it from that angle rather than, oh, I'm making a big puffy v. <laughs> I'm going to say ease again as well as you're working through some sounds. Just keep it really easily. Just keep it really easy. <sighs> <sighs> The breath comes in and a sound comes out when we get that lovely little connection with the support. Now remember to let the belly release on each in-breath. That is vital so those support muscles can return to a kind of neutral, unreleased or unengaged state, let's say, before we use them again. And we retain that flexibility in the abdominal wall. Belly goes out on the in-breath and we get that gentle little response underneath on the sound on the way out. And just a reminder for ease once more, I'll keep saying it. I love what Barbara Houseman said in the recent British Voice Association workshop about imagining you're working with a really cocky boredom, <laughs> like you really don't care and you're so good at it. <laughs> it's a great approach to keep the over-efforting at bay. So just imagine you're amazing at this. Also, just a little note that the th sound is related to tongue tension and the v to jaw tension. So if you find one of those harder than the other, that's completely normal. And it may point to just a little bit of extra holding or tension in that part of the vocal tract for you. So just keep exploring and telling your body to offer the sounds to you with a little less effort and focus your attention in that lower area. 
once you've done those sounds, you can move on and try zh, as in measure, zh, or z, as in zebra. They're just slightly harder to do as released and easy, so keep those ones until you're comfortable with what we've been doing on the first three sounds. You can also bring in the classic kind of lip trail and humming, and when you feel like you've nailed this bit or explored this for a while with the sounds being really released, then you can explore rhythmic patterns. And that's where we get into this kind of accent method breathing technique. I'll put a little link to accent method breathing in the show notes. You can have a little nosy about that. Now, if you're still making noises and exploring this, you can stop now. Have a little stretch and a yawn and slowly bring yourself to standing by rolling onto your side, taking a minute there, pushing up to seated, and then standing up like you've done a lot of breathing. So just take your time when you're bringing yourself upright again. So that's a wee step towards bringing the support awareness that we've been exploring into actual sound. It's a great way to remind your body what it should be doing when we're voicing and speaking. So if you've been experiencing vocal fatigue issues or discomfort when voicing, and you know that it's not related to a diagnosed pathology, of course, this work is really great for re-coordinating the voice and the support, getting that vocal fold closure and airflow coordination. Now, look, there's loads more of this stuff. And obviously, I could go on and on and on, as I'm sure you're aware. We're on episode 20 already. (laughs) But you're busy and important with a life to lead. And so am I. So just give this a try a few minutes each day, aiming to get to the point basically where you're not really thinking about it and your body's taking over and the sound's nice and easy and the belly's nice and flexible. And ultimately, it feels really easy peasy and habitual for you. Now, of a wee request, we're at episode 20 and I'd love to do a little mailbag episode where I answer some of your questions because I get lots of people getting in touch with me on social media and stuff. Uh, it might make me feel like a grown-up podcast as well. It's it's always fab to hear from you out there in listener land, uh, just to know how you're finding things as well. So if you have a question on anything we've covered or voice training for me or an idea for an episode even, just pop it to me via the contact page of my website, which is nickredmanvoice.com. Link in the show notes, obviously. And I'll get a little Q&A episode set up as soon as possible. Fab. All right. Well, thanks for joining me again. See you next time and enjoy your buzzy fricativing on the floor. <laughs> Buzzy fricativing, there's a tongue twister. Thanks for listening to the Voice Coach Podcast. For even more tips, tricks, exercises, and a general crack, head over to our Facebook community, The Voice and Accent Hub. Thanks again.